All right, Coach Silas, uh, the reviews are in. You came in my studio for an hour. People wanted more of it. They wanted you to no, host, co-host not. a show with me. Yes, they did. <laughs> you got a great career once you're done with coaching, which will hopefully be a long yeah, time from yeah, now. Yeah, let's do that in about uh, 10 years. How old are you now? I'm 49. Oh, there's no way. my last there's year no of my 40s. <laughs> I got to live it up. I think I'm the second oldest person in the traveling party now. Because, of course, Luke is like old enough to be my great-grandfather, so uh, I'm just teasing. Uh, speaking of youth, we talked about this before, but just how do you let these 19-year-olds who are freakishly athletic and 20-year-olds <laughs> go into play against grown men that are 27, 28, 29 in the NBA? I mean, this is a huge learning process for them coming up. It is a learning process, but we have a year under our belt, right, with, with the five guys who were here last year and, got, and gained experience there. And then we're adding four new young guys in. But, uh, yeah, you just learn and, and you teach. You learn. You make mistakes. You learn from your mistakes. You have victories. You celebrate the victories. Mm-hmm. And just take it day by day. If we look at it as an 82-game process, then that makes it hard. But if you take it day by day, practice by practice, game by game, then – you got some. Obviously, you love all your players, but I was asked nope, this. I don't love. Them. No. <laughs> I love all of them. Well, you may not have loved all of them in, in the past, ways. but that's a different issue yeah. for a different time. <laughs> <laughs> I won't throw that question at you. But somebody asked me. They said, "What's the tangible improvement from year to year?" Obviously, besides wins, I want this to be Jalen Green year to be on the marquee, so to speak. What does he have to do to make that happen? Yeah. So take what he did at the end of the season. Take the improvement that he made this summer as far as his strength. He, he, as you see him walking around, you probably don't see a bunch of muscle that he gained this summer, but he gained a bunch of strength. And him being able to hold his ground offensively and defensively. And um, for us as a group, we have to do a better job with our spacing so he has more room to get to the hoop, make plays for his teammates, Um get dunks and transition all those things uh but for him year two is hard i talked to him about year two because i've had experience with year two right and you usually uh come in with uh some hype around you based on what you did the year before but then you do have a target on your back a little bit of from the teams that are coming in like hey we're not gonna let this guy do what he did last year so he's gonna have to rise to that challenge knowing that we all got his back and the work that he's put in this summer is uh is what's going to carry the day and usually that second year is even better than the first and uh he had a pretty good first year as sure being did. a first team all rookie guy uh you talked about getting some space i think jabari smith should help out with that For with sure. um how much have you thought i mean I've, obviously you've thought a lot about it but Using him in pick and pop situations and and those types of things as far as spacing the floor. Yeah, so there's two ways for him to space is when he's at the four and uh, when he's picking and popping at the four, he'll have less opportunities because they'll most likely switch. Um, So when he's at the four, him spacing beyond the four point line on our court where his defender has a decision to make. Is he going to help on those guys driving the ball since there will be more space on the floor? Or is he going to be hugged up on uh, Jabari because of his talents where we can turn the corner and get into the paint? The other way he can get to his pick and pop is playing the five. And he will play some five this season where it won't be a switchable situation for those guys. And if they're not going to switch and he's popping back and he's stepping into that shot with rhythm, it's, it's really um, – Good for him because, yeah, it's going to be tough initially for him to get all the shots that he wants just because of the position and the switching and and all that. So he has to learn that. But the thing about Jabari, he can defend right now. (laughs) Right now. How nice is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He can defend his guy. He can defend defend multiple positions. He has defensive, defensive instincts. We saw some of the blocks he had in summer league, and he's so long and quick. That uh, great I'm, hustle too, yeah, wow. yeah, and competitive and yeah. all that. So I'm, I'm, I can't be more excited about him on the defensive end, and uh, the offense will come. Uh, speaking of the five, Alpi played some overseas hoops as of late, yep. and all the Rocket fan sites just send pictures and videos <laughs> and whatnot. I, mean, I take that with a grain of salt, <laughs> but I'm just a fan. So right. what do you take out of it? Uh, a lot. He was on a very good team. They were. He was a guy that they went to. 
when they needed a bucket, they would go to him and let him make the play, whether it's his post-up scoring or his passing out of the post. So him gaining some um, confidence as a result of what he did for the Turkish national team is big. And uh, he's going to – this is going to be a big step for him from year one to year two, going from being – a, bo- a backup to a starting center where he's playing against starting centers and he's going to have to defend. And, uh, you know, they're not going to make it easy on him. Tari Eason uh, played pretty well in the summer league. You have to be excited about him. I mean, when you have him, you have Jabari. KPJ's pretty good defender. Jalen Green's improving. Feels like the defense is going to be a lot improved this year. Yeah, it will be. It will be. The, these guys are competitive. And, and more they, switchable, probably. But definitely more switchable. Uh, when Alpi's out of the game, we could be definitely more switchable. But we just need to try harder. <laughs> <laughs> and that's going to be up to me to make them try harder. So I'm not afraid of that challenge at all. And, and uh, they understand the importance of it. And a good defense leads to a great offense to where you can get the ball to the floor quickly. And this, that's what we want to do. We don't want to be playing against set defenses, so we need to get stops. And, and the biggest part of getting stops is getting rebounds. So that's where the length of Alpi and the length of Jabari and the athleticism of Scoot and Jalen comes into play to where when we can rebound the ball, we can just go. Final thought, uh, the team unfortunately led the league in turnovers, I think, almost from the jump, and yeah. that has bugged you and bugged all of us. Do you hold – the point guard, I would think, would want to hold that more personally responsible than anything else. Is that something that Scoot thinks about? I mean, all the guys should be thinking about it, but especially your point guard that you're going to have the ball in his hands more than anybody else. Yeah, so there's two parts to it. There's the Scoot part where, yeah, he feels he feels it. He knows that uh, his decision-making has to get better, and it did get better as the season went along, but – we have to help him with our spacing. We have to help him where the decisions are easier when we don't have two guys standing next to each other and he's trying to pick between the two. Mm-hmm. There should be enough space to where if the second defender comes, he knows the easy play. So um, the the spacing will help his uh, decision-making, but it is on him for sure to make better decisions as he's getting into the paint. And he's so dynamic that, the decision between scoring and passing and helping his teammates is something that's going to continue to grow. 